Yes, we're doing the body club with Connie and Mohawk dude. Psychic powers don't make a man appealing. <laughs> what a thing to say. I joined the body improvement club. We got a mission: improving our bodies. He's, he's doing, doing. Okay, he's participating. I joined the track team in high school. I can say that this is real. This is this is how track is. <laughs> Sucks. All right, so I gotta say, it's only the beginning of the third episode and I'm already in love with the show. I made this offhand comment last episode about how it would be interesting to see the backstory on how Mob developed his powers. But thinking about it later, it occurred to me that it's actually a stroke of genius having the focus not be his powers and the d development of his powers. What it seems like this is gonna be about is Mob's journey into finding who he is and finding self-value. And despite the fact that there are obviously supernatural elements in the show, it's feeling very real to me. Just to begin with, it's so clear that Mob has unbelievable value as a, as a person. Even if we're looking at it in objective, like what do you offer things, he is one of the most talented people, if not the most talented people in a very specific way, in a very useful skill, right? He seems to be a decent kid, like, I don't really see him being malicious or anything. He's trusting, which is a, a good sign of his character. Because usually people who are trusting are trustworthy. His flaws, if he has any so far, are that he's young. You know, like, God forbid. But there's this quest that's begun of how do I get this girl to notice me? And there's so much poetic life beauty in that because it's sort of clear to an observer, especially with experience, that that's not the point. But also that that's not the worst starting point. Like, whatever gets him going, you know, whatever gets him on the path. And he's doing something that is totally outside of his comfort zone and actually might be really good for him, which is joining the body club. He's like exploring an element of life as this sort of like open-eyed kid. And so it's really exciting. That comes across to me wanting to like experience this journey with him. I also got to give the show major points because I feel like what I actually expected at the end of last episode was for that whole I'm joining the body club thing to be a gag. And then that this episode to resume with him just joining the psychic club. But no, we're actually going to explore the body club, which is really exciting because it's so counter to his natural disposition, it seems. There's just so much happening really quickly in this show. It's really fun. If everyone is not special, baby, you can be what you want to be. I just realized that the opening contains that theme of like searching for finding out exactly who you are, striving to be who you want to be. It's all been there from the beginning. I mean, who would choose the body improvement club over us? Let it go. Yeah, who would want to improve their bodies? Jeez. It's your turn, President Corrupt. This game's going great. It's going real well. That's how you play that game. Thank you so much for letting us use this room. Oh no, they grovel. Most of our training is forced to anyway. We just need this room to store our equipment. Oh my god, he's beautiful and kind. <laughs> Who is this specimen of a man? <laughs> wow. Immediately stomping all over the faces of everybody who would wish to write this body improvement club off as a bunch of shallow, meat-headed, simpleton jock figures. In all seriousness, though, about, like, exercise. Well, personally, I find track to be the just the absolute worst, and solo running to be extremely tedious. Exercise, in general, is one of two things that when I resume doing them as a habit, I hate myself for not having kept that habit the whole time. It's one of those things where I'm always made better by its inclusion in my life, and I'm always made worse by its absence. Undeniably, and I don't even mean in terms of my physical state and stamina or whatever, I just mean my emotional health and outlook. The other one of those things is reading nonfiction, according to interests. Now, How's your body? Is it improved? I've always relied on my psychic powers for everything. <laughs> what kind of lame excuse is that? Mob is gonna make it in life. He's gonna make it. I'm fully behind him. He identified a weakness and he's, he's going after it, even though it's literally making him look like this. He could only bend spoons before! My dream is to make contact and have initial interplanetary dialogue with extraterrestrial life forms! Is that where this is going? Are we gonna meet aliens? I feel like nothing's off limits, and that's exciting. I knew it, I was just lazing around. But now that you're here with your psychic abilities, I finally got a shot! <laughs> <laughs> I've gotta go pump some iron. What? You're kidding. I'm burning with passion here. Why are you so indifferent? That's how it goes. It's sort of staggering how much is packed into every scene. Like, first of all, shout out to that muscle and muscle box. Not exactly sure what's in there, but I have a feeling it's muscle related. That passionate speech she just made, it doesn't feel like there's anything impure in it necessarily, but it just occurred to me listening to that, that one of the dangers for Mob is that people are going to see opportunity for themselves and his gifts. And him being sort of this naive, trusting character, there's a danger there. But then another interesting thing between them, and also something about Mob, is this relationship between talent and interest. People who have interests, strong, enough or aligned enough that there's no friction between their enjoyment of doing something and the work it takes to do something are the people you gotta you gotta watch out for you turn your back on them for one second and then you look back and they've surpassed your wildest expectations of what they can do because for someone like mob developing his psychic powers it's the opposite of work 
it is what gives him life. When you find those things that are perfect for you, it gives you energy. And so other people who like have identified a goal they want to reach, but haven't sort of addressed that friction process of applying themselves to that craft are going to spend a lot of time thinking about doing it and fantasizing about the result, but are going to lose to a mob-like character who's just doing it as a natural part of his existence and has entered that feedback loop of like immediate reward of doing. I can look around myself and see the people I know who are really talented at things and also the things that I feel like I'm gifted at. For example, people ask me for advice about being able to do certain things and Usually I'm surprised by that question because it was never anything I set out to do. It was something that felt good to do. And so I just did a lot of it, you know, but is there a takeaway from that? And I sort of have two, maybe even contradictory things. One, I think that even if it's not a natural thing, getting to that state where it becomes a joy to work on can be reached artificially, starting with a lot of hard work. Once you get to the point in something where you're not sort of learning the rudimentary mechanics of a thing, but you're able to play with that thing in a way that's fun and creative or whatever, that I feel creates a feedback loop. So discipline can be useful in that regard, but then sort of opposite from that and actually I think maybe somewhat more aligned with my feelings I actually think that discipline might be overrated as a tool for success and that maybe a more productive approach is to not fight the current of those emotions if you're really good at something and it's the thing you're putting all your time into that's the thing for you and if you think you want something but it's really difficult for you to do the nitty-gritty elements of that thing to get good at it it's probably not the thing for you and yeah it can be overcome and I think there's real value in that but then for me there's sort of a question of like well what if you took that same energy of discipline and put that into the thing you're already loving and ramp that up a thousand percent and try to take that and make that into something that fulfilled other needs besides just a hobby. Like for example, maybe someone has a hobby. It's more than just a pastime. It's more than just what they do to relax or whatever. It like makes them feel alive to do, but that doesn't solve, let's say a financial need. Instead of that, they come up with this like plan for a career, let's say, and they start plugging away at this career. And it sounds really good to think about on paper. And it's fun to tell people that that's the career path you're on. You get some sort of like social reward from that like oh yeah i'm gonna be a, i'm gonna be an ex right but the truth is the daily reality is a struggle well what if instead of doing that you put that energy towards the hobby and try to figure out a way where it could become a career it, it's really difficult i don't want to make light of it and say that that's just you know you snap your fingers and you turn gaming let's say into a hobby but it's not like that's impossible and it's definitely something to consider and i feel like that's something not often talked about enough it's like rather than try to take yourself take your personality and wrench it into a pre-existing shape what if you allowed yourself to take its natural shape and created it and maximize it in such a way that it could seep into other areas of life in a way that justified the, the time investment, if that makes sense. The body thing is really cool. I respect it. But for me, it's clear he's going to get all the attention ever that he could want because of his natural gifts, eventually. Actually, it might be more accurate to say, I want to become more appealing. So right. See, that's you want to be popular. very astute. No, not really. Well, you won't be. Huh? Oh, thanks. <laughs> not a chance. I won't let it because I need you for my own Read fantasies. Minds using telepathy. You have the power. Do that and you'll be super. Ooh, this is a potential dark road. Good luck reading romantic interest minds though. What brought this on? Oh, I was just wondering. Ask him for girl advice. I feel like Reagan has it. It'll be terrible, but he has some, and I want to hear what it is. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's just a fact of life. Even yours truly has dreams of popularity. You mean he's not Popular? <laughs> May I ask you a question? Is something troubling you? Your face is troubling me. My grades are just fine. Of course they are. He's one of those kids that gets A's without even trying, isn't he? It must be your health. We'll get the girls eventually. It's about love. There you go. That's amazing. How keep you know? <laughs> oh my god. Yes. That's fortune telling for you. I have to head home. You'll be popular. Okay, let's go then. <laughs> I'm sold. Should have just started with the popularity thing. An invite to a meeting. Simply put, I just want to be popular. Even more simply put, I just want Tsu Tsuyomi to like me. Religious order? Yes, it's called Nothing L. says popularity like joining a religious cult. So how do I become popular? <laughs> now, now, don't be so hasty. Speaking of dangers for mob. No way, a suspicious group. So make yourself at home. Nothing suspicious about this at all. Do you recognize me? I'm Mizado from your homeroom class. Mizado. <sighs> I've never talked to her before. This has a very, uh, Legend of Korra feel. You're all smiling so brightly! <laughs> this is terrifying. I don't see any Kool-Aid, but I know they've been drinking it. In order to openly accept the gift of happiness, you must lower your walls and set your hearts free. Is this is gonna be psychic related. You really think people can be happy just by laughing? Get real. Who might this be? We found him sleeping Death in the apartment under some newspapers. How sad, a victim of the recession! You poor soul! That's not very funny. <laughs> 
This episode took a dark turn. We were like, we're going on our bodies, and then suddenly we're in a cult. How did you manage to attract this many followers in such a short time? I don't believe it. Oh. I can take a stab at it. I'm here to investigate the bad rumor concerning this organization. Oh, wow, it's on a mission. Bad rumor, you say? That you're using Speaking of instincts. To brainwash people, then forcing them to join your cult. I want to take a guess and say that you don't even need hypnosis for this. Basically, they're just walking around asking people about a succession of problems until they find out that, surprise, people have problems that they don't know how to deal with. That's not enough to convince most people, but you know what is enough to convince most people? Being in a crowd of people who are in a state of hysteria. Anyone who's been to like a motivational group or like a guru group or anything like that knows what I'm talking about. There's this kind of high you get. From that experience and i guess thinking about it now it is a sort of hypnosis it's just not an intentional sort of one-on-one -on -one hypnosis the way we think about it the danger of course is that the appeal then is that high and the fact that one feels a high while being in a swarm of people who are in, in a state of enrapturement does not speak at all to whether there's any kind of actual organic or systemic progress happening on an individual level and so as soon as you walk out of that crowd, you go right back to where you were, only worse because now you've formed an addiction to that feeling. And so people become perpetual students in that sense. Like you see this a lot with self-help people where people are not actually being helped. They're kind of addicted to the feeling of being in a self-help group. So they never like graduate in that sense where they've like actually gotten something meaningful out of it and then no longer need the, the thing, which should be the point. Like the point of school is not to be a perpetual student, but to get what you need from school so you can not do school anymore. But you'll find people who become lifers and it doesn't take much convincing. It just takes a certain amount of purposelessness or restlessness of the soul or what have you and because everyone needs to believe in something if that void is there somebody will definitely come along to fill it and then we're just sort of at the whim of chance as to who it is that comes along as you recall moments ago he was a very sad man Sparkle! <laughs> all right maybe there was something supernatural going on so what do you think now young lady i'm even more creeped out than before i'm sure you'll find a job now <laughs> right that's what will get him a job laughing hysterically he can be employed as Joker's henchman. You infiltrated LOL, doubting our smiles for no reason, insulting our beliefs and our congregation. Death to you. It wouldn't be sincere at all. Start smiling. I insist you do. I will say there is something to this guy's no way. thing. I don't want to lie to myself like that. <laughs> Faking an emotion is a useful thing sometimes. No. Don't. Fight it. <laughs> but how? Somebody save me. Um, excuse me. <laughs> Mob. It doesn't have anything to do with being popular. May I leave now then? <laughs> we got a goal. He's not smiling. Does that mean the smile Despite mask didn't work on the him? mask? He's got that level 100 special defense. My dad once told me that people who've never smoked before are missing out on half of their lives. It made me realize people define missing out differently. Interesting. LOL is the starting line for me to become the religious leader of all humanity. A modest goal. A staring contest competing with three of my smile leaders. You'll all drink How does one become a smile laugh and spit it leader? Loses. What do you say? Mom, no. It's a trap. Mom's going to win, though. We're creeping up there. More than halfway to 100. I was going to say that this guy's obviously not. The most... Good, but the whole cult and mind control thing aside, I feel like there actually is something interesting about trying to force emotions. Like if you're feeling miserable, but you adopt the mannerisms of someone who's like in a really good mood, even privately. In some cases, it actually does have a positive effect on the mood because while we often conceptualize our states of being as like emotional and then physical, there is something like a feedback loop that exists between them. But even if it doesn't have a positive effect, I think what ends up happening is that it changes the shape of whatever that negative emotion is to a point where it becomes more clear and can pass through, if that makes sense. Like, for example, sadness can go from this really frustrated, anxious sadness to like a mourning type of sadness that can be better processed, if that makes sense. I think the heart of this kind of thing actually has its roots in meditation, where the goal is not to feel one way or the other necessarily, but to try to have a more bird's eye view on what's going on and to not have emotions be these definitive things in any moment, but just to be emotions that are sort of like passing through. It's the development of a core that is sort of an observer and can, you know, fully feel everything that's going on, but in some key sense is also separate from it. And so thinking of emotions as things that can be played with like that, I think is akin to that kind of mental process, perhaps. Oh, rock, scissors, paper. Rock, scissors, paper. Oh, we tied. All right, ready? next time. If you laugh, you lose. This guy watches YouTube. My money's on Bob. What? <laughs> Those two Bob's reward for winning is getting milk spit in his face. Powers, I'll throw him into a smiley maelstrom, the likes of which. 
<laughs> timing of that. Of course, this time. The milk has a little extra kick to it. What is it, like spicy? He's dying and they're laughing. Even I'm starting to have fun right now. Admittedly, this would be fun to watch. This is not your everyday gathering. That wasn't laughter. I feel like this could end with Mob becoming a religious leader. Wait a minute. He just neutralized it. He discovered it and neutralized it. Get a clue. Why do you always look so bored all the time? Uh, I'm not bored, I promise. Will this end with an like, insight into his popularity? <laughs> that kid looks like someone you want to have around. Get a clue already. Oh no, not Sabomi too. That was a huge jump. With a personality such as yours, you won't be able to laugh with the girl you like. When feelings are shared, typically they're physicalized in some way. Uh oh. But you're not able to do that. We've are jumped you? like a full 30% in like 8 seconds. You'll be alone forever. Uh, yep, yeah, well, <laughs> we're getting there. I have a feeling no one is going to be laughing you make me laugh when he with your psychic powers. gets to 100. You're not even a person. I'm glad that the one who said something as horrible as get a clue was an evil spirit. Oh, not even human. Well, that makes it a lot more palatable to destroy this jerk. <laughs> get a clue already. Maybe it's the just not the one, you know what I mean? When people are unable to act or do as they please, or to truly express themselves, their emotions come to a halt while attempting to spare the world around him. But he's Mom's about to hit 100 soon. Using his powers has become a complex. Got it. He's... Repressed. Hence the counter. Here we go. We've gotten to 100. That emotion is rage. Oh! <laughs> Alright. If the policy of your religion is to kill outsiders, come at me with everything you've got. You might find that task a hell of a lot easier than making me laugh. Yeah, this is gonna feel really good, right? I'm only going to need about two seconds High level to dimple. There's so much in that explosion system, the counting system. I feel like as I watch it, it's going to keep coming up in different ways. But so my first thoughts on it are that it feels really authentic and a great way of conceptualizing the struggle and I guess trade-off between safety and authenticity or something like that. One of the weird things about being truly great in a certain way is that you're entering uncharted territory because if you're in the top level of something, just by definition, there aren't going to be that many people ahead of you paving the way for you. And I'm not just talking about skills. It could be anything. It could be just even personality traits or just being advanced in any way. And the way that the world is commonly conceptualized is that the things we often see or the things that are most common are the way things should be. And there might be some degree of truth to that, but that's obviously going to be limiting. And so to step out of those constraints of expectation allows you to enter this domain of incredible potential, but is also somewhat difficult to enter willingly just because you're sort of taking that whole thing on your own shoulders. And if you haven't gone through whatever it is that makes you confident in doing that or makes you have internalized that, it's worth it to undergo that, especially because actually trying to please other people has this opposite and counterintuitive effect where people like you less, you know, anybody can conform, or at least the way people like you is not genuine regard, it's just that they feel you're safe. It's sort of like being set up on a date by someone who is insecure. The insecure person will match you with someone that they internally feel is beneath them, but they'll tell you they're great. And what they mean by they're great is they're safe. But those are not the same things. I know that's a very weird example, but that's just what came to mind. There is a potential danger to that. It's only so long that you can play that game unnaturally trying to please others by repressing your own natural state and also having it not work before it becomes a point of frustration and goes in another extreme which is like cynicism and perhaps rage but i think that between those two points there's something like actual real beauty and power when it's under control and understood and is used in the way that one wants to use it but mob is this confused kid he's gonna be swinging between those states until he gets the lessons he needs to learn which i, I think is going to be his journey in this show between i'm going to squeeze myself into the shape everybody wants me to be so that subomi will like me or the world is disgusting and i just hate it and i'm gonna let loose and whatever happens happens it's not my fault you should try to crawl Dead. <laughs> Look at all that flash. I'll be dead, kid. Oh, he's a demon. He can regrow and get more veiny. Someone's been watching Demon Slayer. You may be the real thing, 
He's having a lot of fun too. Yes! A direct hit! The number of fights I've endured is what will decide the victor and the loser here! Nope. And the smile shatters. Nice shot. She won't be able to get a clue, huh? Not much rake in this episode. Skills like that are beyond your level of comprehension. He's taking so much abuse this episode. I'm always such a downer. This time I ruined a whole bunch of people's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you did destroy that whole religion. Who says their fun has to be the same as your fun. <gasps> You're the protagonist of your own life. There we go. And all they were doing was laughing. They're also hiding. Come on, what happened? You can tell me all about it. That's really sweet. I seem to remember him trying to make some boys smile, but it just wasn't gonna happen. And she's got the scent of Mob's abilities now. He might be the true messenger of God. I knew it. I knew there was some weird way that this could end with Mob being a religious figure. It's a popular con based on crowd psychology, usually aimed at the weak-willed. Right. But with powers like yours, it didn't work. That guy also represented a potential dangerous future for Mob if he doesn't get under his control. So you should be proud of yourself. There you go, Reagan. We're back to zero. That was some real heart there in that scene. And he's 100% right. I feel like Mob's, you know, biggest obstacle is just not understanding that he has a lot of time. Partner? Ooh. Is this character? That was surprisingly sweet, but I love it. Honestly, just from reflecting on my life, I feel like the key to success as an adolescent is to survive it. <laughs> you know, like, you just get through it. So much becomes clear later. Adolescence is just this weird house of mirrors version of life, you know, where it's just ref refracted through this very simple animalistic lens. There's an interesting trap in it that I think this episode brings to light that I guess is not even limited to adolescence. I think that it's possible to like be living in this trap forever. But what happens is we all have these very fundamental human needs and things we want out of life. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being attracted to someone or wanting romantic affection or wanting to fit in with society, wanting to be well liked by one's peers. I mean, I feel like you ignore that at your own, your own peril. I don't think the answer is to deny the importance of those things. The trap though is not being open to the multitude of ways one can facilitate the achievement of those things in life. Because people are typically very uncreative and everyone will tell you that the way to achieve it is through this very specific set of rules in this game. And as a kid or an adolescent, you're trained to kind of conform yourself to the authority of the structure of the world in which you live. But part of greatness, I think, part of real achievement comes from sort of questioning those boundaries and being a little bit more fluid with oneself about who one is in the world and how one gets what one needs. But one of the key realizations for that to come true is that you have to sort of believe in the unseen. You have to know that that's possible because if you judge the world only by what's around you and what's common, what you're going to find is this very sort of basic way of approaching the world and a lot of people who are determined to keep you in their world because that's what's comfortable for them and anyone who rises above that or shows any sign of greatness that allows them to escape the very narrow framework in which most people exist is going to be a threat. But it's very very hard to have that vision when you're 12 or 13 or whatever Mob is. Which is why I said like his biggest flaw is just being young. There's no doubt on my mind he's going to make it, but man is it going to be an adventure to see him get there. <laughs>